warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Tonight, inshallah, we are going to talk about how we can have a personal relationship with the Quran, how it can be something that will impact our lives right now, and how it's something, inshallah, that is going to transform us all the way to the hereafter, God willing. So first of all, what we're going to begin with is one transformation story. Then, we are going to talk about how come this person transformed, and how can we transform, and then we're going to look at the Qur'an and our relationship with it, and you're going to figure out what I'm talking about in a moment, inshallah. Alright, so, let's begin. How many of you have heard of the story of Malik ibn Dinar? Yes, I love this story, I tell it frequently, and it's because of something powerful which happens to him through the Qur'an. So Malik ibn Dinar, he was an individual who was not necessarily involved with Islam. He was someone who didn't pray regularly, he was an individual who drank regularly, he was considered oppressive, and he was um, not necessarily someone we look to as a role model. So this individual, he has an infant daughter. And once he has this daughter, he is so in love with this daughter of his that he loves to play with her and spend time with her. He just loves being around her. And through that love for her, he started to kind of change a little bit. Now, this daughter, when she is an infant, what happens is she suddenly passes away. Now, how many of you have like little brothers or sisters or little cousins? Yeah? Are they like really, really cute? Do you like show pictures of them to other people and post them on Facebook? Right? You just love being with them? Now, God forbid, may Allah protect every one of uh, the loved ones that we have and everywhere in the world. We can imagine the pain of losing that loved one, right? Especially when they're so little and they're so cute and we love them so much. Now, that's exactly what happened to Malik and Dinar. He loses his daughter. And in his sadness, he's so overcome that he starts to drink alcohol. And he drinks and he drinks and he drinks and he drinks until he knocks out drunk. So when he knocks out, he has a dream. When he has a dream, He's standing on the day of judgment, and there's no one around him. It's just him. And suddenly, he is being just followed by a huge snake. Now, how many of you like snakes? All right. How many of you like big, people-eating snakes? <laughs> how many more? Okay, so you like people-eating snakes. But Nafis, if he was trying to eat you, would you like him? Okay. So. We agree that we probably wouldn't like a snake eating us as an individual. That's what was going on in his dream. There was this huge snake, it's enormous, it's chasing him and it's trying to eat him. So Malik ibn Dinar is running, 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 and there's no one around. Now all of a sudden as he's running, he sees an old, old man. This old, old man is sitting here. And he goes up to this extremely old man and he's like, help me, help me! Don't you see? I'm in such a bad situation! And this old man looks at him and he's like, don't you see how old I am? Don't you see how weak I am? I can't do anything for you. And so what he says is go in that direction. Go in that direction and there might be something that someone can help you with. So he starts in that direction. And as he's going into that direction, he's going, 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 he suddenly sees that he's at the edge of a cliff and he's about to fall off. So he stops and he hears a voice. And the voice says, you are not the people of the hellfire, go back. Because what he sees is the hellfire beyond that, that cliff. So now he's stuck with hellfire on this side, a huge person eating a snake on this side. So what does he do? He heads back. He starts running back. Comes back to that same old man. Help me out. Don't you see what I'm in? And the old man's like, look, you see how weak I am. You see how old I am. There's nothing that I can do. Go in that direction. So then Malik starts going in the opposite direction. As he's running, all of a sudden, he is faced with what? Sorry, too many voices with low, low louder, what? Not Jada. His daughter. He suddenly sees his daughter. So he sees his daughter, the snake disappears, and he's so happy. How many of you have had someone pass away, like someone you really love? May Allah have mercy on everyone whom you love. Amen. Have you ever had a dream about them? Yeah. How does that make you feel? Does someone want to share how they felt when they had that? Just a couple of words? No? Yeah. Yeah, happy to see their face, right? And then you wake up and you're like, I saw that person that I love in my dream. And I, um, I both of my grandparents passed away. Sorry, you get it? Yeah. Honor. You feel honored. It's pound, so true. It's pound love. Um, I, I, I had never experienced death until this past year when both of my grandparents passed away. And Allah had so much mercy on them and everyone's, everyone's loved ones and everyone who's passed away. 
And um, it was so painful. But then I started seeing them in my dreams. And that was incredible. And I remember this one time, I was so sad the night before, and I was like, I just wish I could hug him. And then that night he came and he hugged me in my dreams. SubhanAllah. And I was so, I was so emotional to feel that hug, right? So I want you to think about Malik ibn Dinar. This was like the apple of his eye. He was so in love with his daughter. And all of a sudden, she's in his dream. And not just in his dream, she helped protect him from the snake which was about to eat him. So she sees him, and he sees her, and he takes her, and they sit together the same way they used to sit when they were together in this life. And then she says to her father, Father, do you know what that snake was? He's like, what was that snake? And he's, she's like, Dad, that was the snake that was the embodiment of all of your bad deeds. It came on the day of judgment. Don't you know that everything that we do in this life comes in a, some type of form on the day of judgment? That snake had come in the day of judgment, and it was there to eat up all his bad deeds. You know who that old guy was? Who do you think it was? It was his good deeds. All his good deeds, but they were so weak. They were so little. He had made them so small that they had no ability to help him. And then the daughter says, if it wasn't for you losing me, that difficulty of going through such pain of losing such a small loved one, if it wasn't because of that, then there would be like no hope for you. And then she says something to him. She says, oh my father, hasn't it come the time? And Hasn't not come the time for the believers, for their hearts to be affected by the words of Allah? And he hears this ayah and he suddenly wakes up. He wakes up and he's screaming. He's like, oh Allah, I beg of you to forgive me. I make tawbah right now. Right now I'm gonna change. He jumps out of bed, it's Fajr time. Imagine, this person isn't someone who regularly prays. He decides, I'm gonna go to the masjid. So he decides he's gonna go to the masjid, he gets ready, he goes. As he enters the masjid, the imam is already praying. And as he walks in, he hears the same exact ayah that his daughter had told him in her dream, in his dream. The same exact ayah. Has it not come time yet for the believers that their hearts will be affected by the words of Allah, by the remembrance of Allah? And that's where we're going to leave off for our stories. When is it going to be our turn for our hearts to be affected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the book that transformed the entire globe. The people who used to read the Quran before, there were people who got drunk all the time. People who gambled. They didn't care about women. They had some good qualities. We're not saying every single person in that society was like that. But overall, men, they, they were just going to go down in history with people. We would have never heard of them. Just a random place in Arabia. SubhanAllah. Now the entire globe has been changed because of that. How many people here are not Arab? SubhanAllah, man. We're with nothing to do with Arabia, and yet Allah SWT still blesses us with Islam. So now, what was it that caused that change? Why is it that the Quran is so powerful, and yet we're not affected by it? So, with that, I'm going to leave you to the next question, which I'm going to ask you to talk about right now. And the question is, what are some of the reasons we do not establish a regular relationship with the Qur'an? What I want you to do is I want you to group up, just group up in like six people. If you're only around one person, group around with two people. If you're around no one, please move and I will personally come to you and make sure you do. Please group up. I have give you two minutes, inshallah. I want you to tell me what are some of the reasons we do not establish a regular relationship with the Qur'an. Go, two minutes.
My answer is not going to be as elaborate as uh, the guy up there, but I just think it's, uh, at first it's very difficult. It does progressively get easier as you read more Quran, but in the beginning it's very intimidating. Because Why do you think it's intimidating? The Quran is, is it's, it's not a, it is uh, explicit, but at the same time it's very, uh, there's a lot of nuance and it's, uh, it's, mm. it's, it is so it's poetry, challenging? right? Huh? It's challenging. Oh, it's very challenging, absolutely. Awesome, he's not cool All right, person, right in front of them. Yeah, I think based off what he said, I think it's like the highest form of literature in Arabic that there is. So for speakers that are not Arabic, I mean, if you, even if you do speak Arabic, it's already like the highest form and the most eloquent form of Arabic. So for us, it's probably way more intimidating. And even though you do translate it as effectively as you can, a lot of things are lost in translation. Mm -hmm. And it's not the most direct form of translation. So I feel like you don't get the exact just You don't get the meat like, of yeah. it. Awesome. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, when I read the Quran, like to actually understand, I have to read the English translation. But I'm not. I feel like I'm not getting the full effect of it, and I feel like a lot of that has to do with understanding that the verses come in context, and I don't know the context behind these verses, when they're like why they were revealed, when they were revealed, under what circumstances, 
And so when people, you know, um, like some extremists like stop those verses, oh, well, in the Quran it says we can like stone you, you know, like harm you to doubt it. Doubt it. Exactly. And mean. that just like, it makes it even more uh, overwhelming. So. Absolutely. Because then you're no longer just like, oh, it's kind of hard to understand. I don't understand the context. But it's also like, this is causing me to doubt my own relationship with God, and I don't even know what to do about it. And that's very normal. How many ha of us have had doubts before? I've had doubts before. Yeah, it's a very normal, <coughs> very normal experience. Does that come up Okay. Yeah. Um, pretty much like every, everything that everyone else has been saying, we, we've been talking about. But one of the things I want to add is that we don't make it as much of a priority as we should. Mm -hmm. And and because when we tell ourselves, oh, you know, I don't have time for this because you know I have this, and like um, you know, uh, like if we don't if we don't set it up as like our priority number one. And, like that's usually we think about like you know school or, or something else. And it's really important for that. Yeah. So we we allow for it not to be. about the things we just talked about. Would you as an individual say that one of those things you might be able to relate to one of the issues that was mentioned? Raise your hand if you just thought just one issue that was mentioned kind of was your situation too and my situation too. Definitely my situation. I definitely heard stuff that it has to do with me. Okay, so we have issues. Now, the question is, what are we going to do about those issues? We talked about some of the reasons why we don't establish a regular relationship with the Quran. Are you guys ready for this? Bismillah. Experiencing a relationship with the Quran. <laughs> Subhanallah. Did I get that done? Done. Done. Subhanallah. Okay. Need a perspective change. This isn't just a book. It's a relationship. Here we go. I am so excited about this. There are a few steps we need to take to come close to the Quran. I think it's my personal theory, from my own experience with the Quran and from listening to our conversations. Now, we talked about the fact that it isn't necessarily something we love. And when it's not something we love, it becomes a little bit difficult to spend time with it because we don't make it a priority and it's hard to understand anyway and no one's holding us accountable, so we just don't do it. But, subhanAllah, what if the Qur'an wasn't just a book? What if it was a relationship? So what we're going to do tonight, inshallah, is go through a relationship with the Qur'an. Now, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't know if that was one of those more like real cop. May Allah bless you. Okay, so now, number one, that was really a dog, guys. Okay, recognizing why we really need the Quran as a lifelong partner. That's the first.
first step we're going to do. We're going to talk about why the for n is a friend with benefits with the right kind. Number two, getting over awkward conversation starters. How many times did you just meet someone and you're like, awkward, right? Has it ever happened to you? It's happened to me, yeah? So how many times are we going to go to the for n and it's like, awkward, don't want to be in this conversation, not going to happen again. It's a problem. Three, popping the question. We are going to pop the question tonight, inshallah. And number four is making the commitment, which is saying, I do. We are all going to get married to the Quran tonight, inshallah. Okay, now, this is a friend with benefits, the right kind. There are so many words up there. So I really want four people to raise their hands quickly. One, two, three, four. Okay, now. Okay, all of you who raised your hand. All right. Sorry, this, it was you, right there, the jacket, yes. All right, you four, you're going to read me the first one. You're going to read it for us all. Are you ready? Oh, put them on, listen to that. On three. On two. Go, we're gonna get you in the next round, okay? You're, you're for the next round. All right, listen to that. On one, on zero, go. Like, I'm there for you. 
So, the question is, are we going to be there with the Qur'an in this life to be able to get that? Oh, there's so much more. Bismillah. All right. You're a warrior when no one else cares. Who wants to have a warrior? All of us. Okay, you all want warriors. Sorry, that was awkward. Okay. There is a chapter of the Qur'an containing 30 verses which, in, which have interceded for a man or a woman until he was forgiven. It is a chapter. What chapter is that? Surah Al-Mulk. If you recite Surah Al-Mulk, which is the 64th chapter of the Qur'an, every single night, it will do what? It will intercede for you. It's going to be there for you, inshallah. Isn't that crazy? You can recite a small surah like that. I know it seems hard at first because it seems like a lot if we're not used to it. But over time, you just memorize it. It becomes super fast. You can do it while you're driving or something. And subhanAllah, it's something which is there for you um, in both worlds. Comforts you in times of grief. There is no one who is afflicted by distress and grief. And says, oh Allah, I am your slave, the son or daughter of your maidservant. My forelock is in your hand. Your decree over me is just. As'aluka, I ask you, by every name belonging to you, which you have named yourself with, or revealed in your book, or taught to any of your creation, or you have preserved in the knowledge of the unseen with you, that you make the Qur'an the life of my heart, and the light of my chest, and a departure of my sorrow, and a release from my anxiety. If you say this dua when you're going through something difficult, Allah will take away your distress and grief and replace it with joy. Isn't that incredible? By this dua of coming close to the Qur'an, subhanAllah. Finally, awesome. The Qur'an will meet its companion on the day of resurrection. When their grave is open for them in a form of a pale man. Do you recognize me? Our response is, I don't recognize you. The Qur'an says, I am your companion, the Qur'an, who kept you thirsty on hot days and kept you awake at night. Every merchant benefits from his or her business, and today you will benefit from your good deeds. They will be given a dominion in the right hand, eternity in the left hand, and there will be placed on their head a crown of dignity. Their parents will be clothed with priceless garments, the likes of which have never been seen in this world. And they will say, what have we been clothed with this? Why have we been clothed with this? It will be said because your child used to recite the Qur'an. Then it will be said to him or her, recite and ascend in the degrees of paradise. And he or her or he or she will continue to ascend so long as he or she recites, either at a fast pace or a, so, or a slow pace. So subhanAllah, when we are taken out of our graves, in that moment, the Qur'an will come to us. Don't we want someone to greet us then? Can you imagine how scary it is to be placed in the dirt, underground? Each of us is going to go through that. Every single one of us is going to be placed in the ground, and dirt's going to be put on top of us. Now imagine that like scariness of having to go through that. But if you're friends with the Qur'an, inshallah, not only will the grave be an opportunity to party, but when we get out of the grave, inshallah, it will be there to greet us after such a long time. Can you imagine what that's like? To meet a friend like that? Don't you want to be married to someone like that? Yes. So tonight, inshallah, we will get married. Now, <laughs> where does this relationship begin? Collaboration nation. What are some of the ways we can establish a relationship with the Qur'an? And how can this vary from person to person or from level to level? For example, somebody who just started today, they're not necessarily going to be the same in three years, right? Or somebody who already knows how to recite it, they're not going to be in the same situation as somebody who has been reciting for five years. So, I want you to take 30 seconds, no, one minute, talk to the people in your groups again, and talk about how we can establish a relationship with the Qur'an. One of the brothers over there mentioned accountability by having like a teacher, for example. So, what are some other ways that we can do it? I want you to quickly talk, go.
How do you make it a habit? Okay, one line a day. Before I was talking about uh, like the context. Hold on, some brothers are being rude. So I think, uh, yeah, the sister before was talking about the context of the ayahs, right? Mm -hmm. So if you view it as like a kind of a story almost, like I mean, uh, so like a look at tafsir books. So like Fizil al Quran by Sayyid Qut. So then you have a deeper personal uh, relationship with the actual verses that are being So you can so. understand why things were revealed, like what was the context of it. Like, subhanAllah, it's incredible to see, like, why is it that Allah asks? Us just to stay away from alcohol for a little bit. It's because that it actually happened. Like people messed up their words when they were reciting. Incredible, it's kind of luck. On this side, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, can you repeat your point louder? Oh, about context. So you have to understand the context in which the verses were told, so you can understand the story. So I recommended uh, a tafsir book that describes basically or like elaborates. So these that added put on under I think the shade of what is it the shade of put on. Yeah, by Sayyid Cook, you can find it anywhere, it's a good. Did you hear him? Is that okay? Uh, yeah.
So having a very deep, meaningful relationship. Yes, right? Okay, so now we're going to talk about how we can establish that deep and meaningful relationship, inshallah. So, first of all, let's see. You meet a student from abroad, study abroad student at your school. Have you ever met one before? Yeah. Okay, awesome, 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 mashallah. Let's say this particular student, who's a study abroad student, doesn't speak the same language as you at all, and they came to your school because they wanted to learn English, okay? So let's also say that they don't really like to use their hands or like any emotional things. So when you're talking to them, you really have no idea what they're trying to say. Like it's just like, you're kind of looking at each other and then you're like, it's so awkward. Or let's say when you do talk, even if you don't necessarily understand the words that one another are saying, you still just get a weird vibe from them. Have you met people who you've got like this like awkward vibe from before? And you're just like, I just want to not really continue with talking to you. You're laughing because it's happened. I mean, subhanAllah, that happens to many of us where we have a really awkward conversation with people. Now, sometimes those awkward conversations turn into really, really, really deep relationships. Have you had anyone in your life at first it was like, oh, I don't like her, I don't like him. But like over time, you started to like each other and are really good friends. Raise your hand if that's ever happened to you before. Okay, so these people here are a testimony that this does happen. So the same way with the Quran. If the Quran is in a language that we don't understand, and every time we try to read it, we don't feel like we can connect to it, and every single time we think about doing it, we're like, oh, it's too hard, it's too awkward, I don't really want to try. It's going to be very difficult for us to establish a relationship. But what if we were to make an effort, the same way we'd make an effort with somebody who we realize has a lot of potential? We could help our love blossom, not just in terms of conversation, but in terms of the way we benefit one another as well, and in terms of the way we connect, that deeper level connection. So now, let's talk about the Qur'an. One of the things that we need is commitment. Another thing that we need is to date the Qur'an. A third thing we need is conversation. And a fourth thing is memorizing commonly used words. So, let's go through that slowly, inshallah. Number one, commitment. The first thing we need to do is make a commitment to the Qur'an. If we are in a relationship with someone, let's say, um, me and the sister, Iman. So I can be Iman. So, we just met. Nice to meet you. My name is Miriam. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now, uh, hey, um, do you want to, like, uh, hang out tomorrow? Okay, cool. I'm glad. Okay, so we hang out tomorrow. So I meet Iman. We hang out tomorrow with MSA West Conference. We don't exchange contact information. Okay, like, I don't forget, I forgot her last name, I couldn't find her on Facebook, we're just like totally lost. And then like five years go by, we don't see each other. And then five years later, we're like, hey man, dude, we're like in front of the Kaaba, subhanAllah, it's in Mecca. Do you think we have a connection right now? We met at MSA West and now we're in front of the Kaaba. Connection, right? Really, really deep. But in between that time period, did we have any type of relationship? We didn't have a contact information, right? So maybe our first relationship, our first initial co contact was good. We like, you know, clicked, we really liked each other, but we lost contact, and yet five years later when we reconnected, we were like, wow, let's not lose each other this time, right? So let's look at that scenario with the Quran. One of us could open the book, and we're in a really, really deep, you know, emotional state. And we're like, subhanAllah, nobody can help me right now. And then we look at the Quran and we're like, why don't I just open it, man? I haven't read it in a long time. Maybe it could help me in this situation. Open it up. Like, Allah, uh, just help me. Bismillah. You just open it and you point your finger. Have you guys ever done that before? <laughs> you know you have. Okay. So you open it and suddenly your finger hits what? Surat Maryam. How convenient. <laughs> so it hits Surat Maryam and you start reading. You're like, SubhanAllah, this is such an incredible surah. Wow, I feel so elated. I'm so connected. She's going through everything I'm going through. SubhanAllah. Okay, so you have that amazing experience. But then, the next day, maybe you do it, the next day maybe you do it, and then you forget. And then we get busy, and then Twitter's more important. So, things keep happening, things keep slipping, and then when we're in another emotional situation, it's like, whoa, last time the Qur'an helped me out. Maybe it'll help me out this time again. Do you see where I'm going with this? So that's one situation. Another situation could be like, I meet, uh, so I go. What's up, Noor? Okay, so I already know Noor, so I can do this with her. So we meet, and we're like, oh, dude, she's I really don't want to talk to her. She's really awesome, mashallah. I didn't want to do this with someone I don't know, so I want to embarrass them. So I hope I'm not embarrassing you. But, um, okay, so then it's like, all right, man, subhanAllah, next time I see her, what's up? <laughs> right? And then another time I see her, like, hey, what's up? Nice to see you. Gotta go. 
go, right? And then that keeps happening, and I don't establish a relationship with her. But let's say one day we're both at a party, which is a lecture at MSA West, and then I'm like sitting next to her because there's no other seat, and then like we just laugh together because someone said something funny, and now we have this connection. And then we kind of talk afterwards, and the more we talk, the more we like each other. So now we suddenly have some type of a relationship. So that could also be a situation with the Quran. We could open and be like, dude, I don't really understand it. I don't really connect with it. I don't really get it. Ooh, I really don't get it. So we have that like feeling, and then it kind of makes us not want to go back, especially if it starts making us doubt our own man. Because then we're like, dude, I just, I really don't get it. So when I don't get it, it's hard for me to feel like I'm coming close to Allah. In fact, it made it more and more confused. So. The point is, these two situations can happen with the Qur'an, just like they happen with people. But the difference is with the Qur'an, is that unlike people, the Qur'an always wants us to be there. Nor might not like me, she might try to run away. But the Qur'an never would do that to me. The Qur'an would always want to be my friend. So the question is, how can we not come close to it if we don't establish a connection with it? Number one, we need to make a commitment. So the first thing tonight we're going to do, inshallah, is we're going to make a commitment. Right now, inside of us, you're at the Qur'an workshop. There's a reason you're here. So, the reason we're here, inshallah, is because we want to become close to the Qur'an. So right now, let's make an intention. I'm going to try. We don't know where our goals are yet, but we're going to try. So we've already done that. Number two, we need to date the Qur'an. Look, how many of you guys watch, like, uh, The Notebook? Aww. Okay. Now, astaghfirullah. Okay, so now, in movies where you see people develop relationships, one of the fun things about a relationship is like, hey, we're going to go out tonight, or like, Hi Leah, you know that guy called me, my husband, he called me, we're going out, okay? It's okay, because I'm married, I'll do that. Alright, so now look, we're going to go out for a date, really, really excited. Of course you're excited, it's the person you love, you love being around them. We need to do the same thing with the Qur'an. So how can we make a commitment if we don't have times where we're actually going to be with it? So practically, for example, in our MSAs, how many of you do event planning for MSAs? Okay, how many of you have jobs? All right, how many of you go to school full time? How many of you would say you're kind of busy? Okay, so all of us have some type of commitment. Now, the difference is, in this situation, when we're dating the Quran, it doesn't matter. Because I am on such an endorphin high. I have to go to the Quran. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to date it. So every single day, from this time to this time, I'm not going to pick up my phone. I'm not going to respond to my tweets. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to focus on my relationship with the Quran. Maybe we'll go to a park. Maybe we'll go to the beach. Maybe we'll go to a dinner together. It doesn't matter. We're going to do something. It could be in my room with no one else listening. But I'm going to develop a relationship with the Quran. The point there is we're making time for it. And it has to be every single day. So now we've made the commitment. And we need to make an every single day relationship with the Quran happen. Number three, conversation. Listening and responding. Think about the Qur'an. How can you have a conversation with it? Tell me. Read it, but you just read it. Huh? Recite it out loud. Ooh, that's good. That's a good one, mashallah. Okay, recite it out loud. What else? Yes? Listen to what we read. Listen to what we read. Okay, so that part of the conversation you're listening, right? You're also reciting. That's another part. What's another part of the conversation? Understand what we're reading. Okay, so that our mind is working. What else? Yeah. Or hug it. Okay. <laughs> Let, think about it for real. If we hear a verse, for example, when Allah SWT tells us that um, when you like when you thank Allah, He's going to increase you in what you're thanking Him for. Where is that in the Quran? La in shakartum what? Where is that in the Quran? Surah Ibrahim. What what surah number is that? What? Okay, Bismillah, we're back. Now, the point is, 
in, a, in building a relationship, we're on me, got three, two, one, zero. Thank you. Thank you. When we're building a relationship with the Qur'an, it doesn't have to be, I just read or I just listen. It can be, I respond. I can have an intimate conversation with the Qur'an because I'm able to actually make dua. I'm able to be like, man, look at my actions. My actions are not like what the Qur'an is saying. So now, how can I respond? I can respond by actually acting in a way that's going to help me change my life. And through that, I'm, I'm not only having a conversation, but I'm acting on the things that we're discussing. I'm choosing to start praying if I'm not praying. I'm choosing to act in a certain way around other people without gossiping, without lying. I'm choosing to do these things because of the conversations I'm having with the Qur'an. Does that still make sense? Are we still together? Yeah? All right. Now, memorizing commonly used words. That's something that's really beneficial. Online, if you go up and you look at look, look up uh, like different PDFs, they have words that are consistently used in the Qur'an over and over. Take time, memorize those words, and when you memorize those words, inshallah, when you're reading it next time or listening, even if you don't get the whole picture, you can be like, oh, I kind of get the topic that that person, that the old sentence is talking about. You guys have done that before? I see some like shaking heads. This sister right here is the one who told me to do that. May Allah bless her. All right. So now, pop in the question. We've gotten over our conversations. We've had a consistent relationship. We love each other. We are so in love, we want to pop the question. Now the pop the question part is, are you ready to begin a relationship of understanding, memorizing, and living the Quran? Yes. What? Yes. What? Yes. Inshallah. Yes. Now, memorizing the Quran, five tips. I want to tell you about memorizing the Quran. How many people here have memorized the Quran before? A part of the Quran. Okay, in those parts of the Quran that you've memorized, have you felt like you kind of have a connection with that surah? When you hear it in Ramadan and you don't understand all the rest of it, you get excited. You know you get excited because you're the one who's like reciting it out loud at the same time as the imam and everyone else is like, why are you standing next to me? So we have such a close relationship with the Quran when we memorize the words of the Quran. That is why, subhanAllah, one of the most beloved and blessed things a person can try to do is take it upon themselves to work on memorizing the Quran. Now, having this lifelong relationship with not just having the Quran in a book, but having it in one's heart is something that impacts everything that we do. When we look around, we see things, we hear about situations, verses come into our minds. We have a consistent relationship with the Quran. We're constantly thinking about it. So now, first of all, we need to make a plan of just starting. Once we start, and once we're already in a situation when we're reading it every day, when we're understanding what we're reading, we can start memorizing it. We start slow. It might take years. I, it took me seven years to do it, subhanAllah. It took a long time. How many people have taken them lots of time? Some people do it in a year, some people do it in ten. How long did it take you? Uh, three. Three? Uh, one year, one month. MashaAllah. How many days? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> So some people take out the time and they just do it on their own. For me, I was doing it while working, while going to school, while being MSA president. There was a lot of things going on. I couldn't do it every single I mean, I did it every day, but I couldn't do it all day long. So it took time. And there were lots of stops because I couldn't find a teacher. So without a teacher, it's hard to be accountable for oneself when you have a lot of stuff going on and you don't make it a priority. So the point is that it can take your whole life. I know people who have memorized the Quran and they're in their 70s or in their late 60s. They're just starting and in their 70s. My Quran teacher recently, there was an incredible sister from Yemen. She is a grandmother of one of the three-year-old students who comes to his class. And then she was like, I can't do it. And he was like, you can do it. Any moment, you can do it. There's a sister who finished in her 80s. How many of us here are 80 years old? Anyone? So you have no excuse. All of us can do it, inshallah. Who cares if it takes 10 years? That's 10 years of an intense relationship with the Quran that we can do, inshallah. So in order to do that, though, we need to find a teacher. First of all, we need to recognize the reason that it's an internal investment. I completely understand the brother's important point that we don't do it just for the reward, but we do do it a little bit for the reward, and not necessarily just the points on your scales, but in the way that it's going to reward your life, and the way it's going to enrich your relationship with Allah, and the way that it's going to impact your daily dealings. One time, alhamdulillah, something, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, incredible happened in my life. I went to one of my teachers and I was like, I can't believe this happened. And she was like, it's because of your relationship with the Quran. That was the first thing she said. I'm only telling you that because I want you to know how real it is. The people here, who fin who's, who, brothers who finished, 
Do, have you seen that in your own lives? Subhanallah, man, it's incredible. We can all have that, inshallah. We just have to work for it. And finally, making a schedule when we're dating the Quran, understanding what you're memorizing. Actually, it's connected to your memorization. I have to go fast because she told me five minutes ago, five minutes. So, uh, I mean, five, five minutes ago. But anyway, the point is, um, for more details on these, you can go to kbob.com, search the Quran series, and inshallah, you can find details about every single one of these topics. Hold on. Oh, no, we're not done. Okay, so, finally, saying I do. This is the moment. What we're going to do right now, inshallah, I want you to evaluate your particular situation based on what we talked about today. Are you someone who's never read it before? Are you somebody who's been reading it for years? Are you someone who knows how to read it in Arabic? Look at your situation and figure out what you need to do to maintain a, a, a regular relationship with it. So right now, take out your phone, take out a piece of paper, take something out. Let's go, bismillah. Nisi, movement, movement. You, move, go. Got it, oh, you're already ready, mashallah. Okay, so what I want you to do is think about Oh, wrong slide. So sorry. SubhanAllah. I was way too excited. Okay, when will you pop the big question? This is the moment. We're going to do this first. So take out your whatever you took out. And what I want you to do is just write where we are. Where are you with the Quran? What are you going to be? Are you going to read it every single day just in English? One ayah a day? After 30 days, you're going to do how many verses if it's been 30 days of one ayah? 30 verses. That's more than some of us do, because some of us don't read it at all. So if one eye isn't where you need to start, then start with that. If you need to start with one page, start with one page. But do it in a language you understand. Because just like that foreign exchange student, if you don't understand the language, and you don't really click, then it's going to be very difficult to maintain a regular relationship. So understand it, or if you're ready to start memorizing, talk about the steps you need to take, go online and read those articles, and shall they give specific details. All right. So you're gonna get 30 seconds for that. Inshallah. writing your review schedule if you don't have one. Oh, sorry, if you've already finished memorizing the whole Quran, you should be writing your review schedule if you don't have one. If you do have one, write how else you can connect with it. Yes. You are writing it! Yes! Okay, because Aliyah is like finished already, we are going to, inshallah, sorry? Oh, okay. Um, so how many of you finished writing your goal? Okay, Does everyone, is everyone clear on what we're doing? Yeah, just making sure. If you haven't finished writing your goal, please continue to think about it. We're gonna end by watching a short video, inshallah, on why, if we have a strong connection with the Quran, inshallah, our whole entire life is gonna be amazing. And hereafter too, inshallah. So really quickly, the slide that I was on uh, before when I made a mistake, this is talking about saying I do. And so um, this is basically how you maintain what you've memorized. And again, if you go on to suhaibweb.com, you can read the Quran series, and then that talks about specific things that you can do to maintain that relationship through memorization, inshallah. So now, when will you pop the big question? We're popping it tonight. What we were going to do is we were going to make the proposal. So what I want you to do, because of course, this is a very romantic and very special and very um, you know, intimate situation, I want you to go home and please pop the question to the Quran. Open it, look at it, and be like, will you please be my lifelong partner for eternity? and then inshallah start an actual relationship with it. Now finally what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how one person was extremely impacted by this. Okay, bismillah, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, yes. Can we hit the light? Oh no, we're good, we're good. Uh oh. I didn't drop the couch or anything like that. I said I was gonna respect the book.
or someone giving me guidance. And uh, one night I decided to really try and get the spiritual mood happening. And I'm sure you, probably some of you have heard this story before, so I apologise. Um, I lit a candle, <laughs> had the window open, had the curtains drawn, and you know, I was trying to get that really spiritual feeling. It was a nice summer night in Melbourne, as summer as it can get in Melbourne. And uh, I was sitting there thinking, this is it, you know, this is the night. I'd have been, you know, investigating all the spiritual proofs, all the scientific proofs about the fact that the mountains are the pegs, about, you know, how, how the, the embryo develops inside, the, you know, the woman, all these amazing proofs, but I still needed that little push. It's like I was on the edge of a cliff, I was ready to jump, I just needed a push. So I was sitting there, and it was very quiet. I was reading Quran, and I stopped. I said, Allah, this is my moment. This is the time I'm about to jump into Islam. All I need is just a sign. Just a little sign, nothing huge, maybe a bolt of lightning. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe half the house can fall down or something, you know, just, just small. Small for you, man. You, you created the earth, come on. So I sat there. I was waiting for the candle to start lighting up to four metres high like in the movies. And I go, okay, go. And subhanAllah, nothing, absolutely nothing happened. I was really disappointed to be honest. So I sat there and I said, Allah, this is your chance. I'm here, I'm not going nowhere. I'll give you another chance. Okay, maybe you were busy, you know, I know it's the daytime over the other side of the world, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. Maybe this time it could just be like a car backfiring, you know, something small. All right, the half the house, the candle, let's forget that. A bird could fart outside, I don't care, just anything. So I said, okay, go. SubhanAllah, absolutely nothing happened. And I mean, I couldn't have even said, oh, that was it. That, that creep just said in the wall, that was it. Absolutely nothing happened. I was really disappointed. I was gutted. I was, I was sitting there thinking, this is it, you know, this was my last chance, Islam. And, and I really, I haven't found it. I pulled back the Quran, I, I turned back to where I was reading. SubhanAllah, the very next verse on the next page, for those of you who ask for signs, have we not shown you enough already? Look around you. Look at the stars. Look at the sun. Look at water. These are the signs for the people of knowledge. Yeah. So, oh, 